Hey everyone, my name's Nick. I'm VP of Hardware and R&D at Fellow. I'm a certified Q Arabica grader. I'm the designer of the Ode Gen 2 Rubers, and I'm the engineer directly responsible for the Ode Gen 2 grinder. So we know that there have been a lot of questions about Ode Gen 2 and about the Ode Gen 2 Rubers. So we just wanted to take some time today to do a little Ask Nick Anything. So I'm super excited to be here and hopefully answer some of your questions to uh, help people gain a little bit more knowledge about what we're doing at Fellow. There are very, very big differences between the SSP multi-purpose burrs that we offer and the Gen 2 burrs. So the Gen 2 burrs are gonna be sort of an all around, quote unquote, unimodal style burr for filter coffee. So what does that mean? That means that it's going to be able to make a really, really tasty coffee, even if the coffee is not perfect, even if you make a mistake as a barista, whereas the SSP multi-purpose burrs are gonna be much, much higher in clarity much higher acidity. Uh, they're gonna be a lot more transparent in the cup. So the way that I like to think about the Gen 2 burrs versus the SSP burrs is that the Gen 2 burrs are gonna have a little bit more body, a little bit more texture, more mouthfeel. They're gonna be a little bit more forgiving in the cup. It's gonna be really easy to make a tasty cup of coffee even if you're not an expert barista. Uh, and the SSP MP burrs are gonna be like laser focused clarity, really, really beautiful acidity, really singing florals. So it's really just about what you like in the cup. If you're someone who likes a rounder, kind of more, I'll say quote unquote, balanced cup, the Gen 2 is probably gonna be great for you. And if you're someone who really loves to drink really lightly roasted, extremely delicate floral coffees, the SSP multi-purpose burrs are without a doubt best in class. So for really, really fruity, extremely lightly roasted coffees, I tend to prefer the SSP multi-purpose burrs, and that's just because it sort of the, these burrs sort of cater to the flavor profile that I look for in a in a burr design. So, for instance, if I have a really really delicate, beautifully grown, you know, washed coffee where I really want sort of uh, extreme flavor separation, I would choose the SSP multi-purpose burrs. That's not to say that you cannot brew a phenomenal cup of coffee with the Gen 2 burrs for that style of coffee. So one of the things that I like to think about is, you know, is the coffee amazing all throughout? Is the green perfect? Is the roast perfect? Is the processing perfect? The SSP multi-purpose burrs are gonna show you how perfect that coffee is, but if there's a green defect or a roast defect, or if the processing can sort of overshadow the characteristics of the coffee, the Gen 2 burrs are gonna round out that sort of edge a little bit to make a more drinkable cup in my experience. So if you like really lightly roasted, perfectly roasted, like perfect coffees, the SSP MP is gonna show you how perfect that coffee is. Um, if you like coffees where maybe the processing is there or like a tinge of roast is there, the Gen 2s are gonna round that out and they can kind of take the edge off a little bit. So for my preference, I love these, but these can also make a really great cup. So designing burrs is a complete nightmare rabbit hole. The short answer is that every single burr geometry is gonna output a different particle distribution and a different particle size within that distribution. So basically the way that the Gen 2 burrs grind coffee, take it from a whole bean to a, the coffee powder, is much different than the way that the SSP multi-purpose burrs do that. Even though if you were to take a look at a particle distribution curve, there are some very, very similar characteristics between the O Gen 2 burrs and the SSP multi-purpose burrs. One of the things I want to just mention really briefly is that people tend to get very, very hung up on particle distribution, but if you had two side-by-side -side graphs of the particle distribution between the O Gen 2 burrs and the SSP multi-purpose burrs, you would not be able to accurately tell what their flavor profile is just from looking at that curve. So that's the long and short answer. So in O Gen 2 with the new NA static that we implemented into the grinder itself, static is pretty much completely eliminated. You're never going to walk away from your grinder and pull the catch cup and have, you know, a bunch of grounds located on top of this magnet anymore. The, the issue has been completely resolved. And so I would definitely recommend checking out some YouTube videos of people who have done reviews of the O Gen 2. Uh, it's been really, really clearly explained. You can see side by side with O Gen 1, like, 
I can honestly say that we completely crushed the problem and I'm super, super proud of all the work that we put into this to get it to be such a nice feature of OGen2. So we made the bigger hopper for two reasons. The first was that, you know, we understood that people were having issues with the coffee beans kind of sliding down into the chamber. And so the way that we needed to do that was to change all of the feed angles. We really couldn't change all of the feed angles in the hopper unless we raised it a little bit to get the, the profile that we wanted so that all different types of coffee could slide down into the chute, right? So that's the first reason. The second reason was that we realized that people out there have 1.3 liter and 1.5 liter batch brewers and people were making really large pots of coffee. And with the Ode Gen 1, they weren't able to single dose. So if you wanted to do a 1.3 liter batch brew at say like a one to 15 ratio, you need about 87 grams of coffee. And if you're doing a 1.5 liter batch brew at a one to 16 ratio, you're gonna need about 94 grams of coffee. So we just made the hopper a little bigger and the catch cup a little bigger to make sure that we could cover those uh, people who really wanted to use the Ode for batch brew. If beans are not sliding down the hopper in your Ode Gen 1 like they used to, it could be either a buildup of coffee oil, so I would definitely recommend giving um, your hopper a little quick cleaning with like a damp cloth, give it a wipe down with a dry cloth. But the other thing I encourage you to think about is, are your beans truly the same? So we know that larger varietals have more surface friction because more of the coffee is actually touching the, the walls of the of the shoot, so you know, just do a quick check. Is it happening with all of your beans? Is it happening with, with only certain varietals? So I would definitely encourage a quick cleaning if it was working and then it wasn't working again, but I don't think it has anything to do with the burrs of the auger or anything like that. So the Gen 2 burrs right here were very specifically designed to fit into any ode ever made ever. That means you can take Ode Gen 2 burrs and take any ode that, we, that comes off our manufacturing line and put them in. So rest assured, if you want to upgrade and buy the Gen 2 burrs, they are guaranteed to fit in your O Gen 1 grinder. So both the Gen 1 and Gen 2 Odes both have the same motor. So I did go down a pretty deep rabbit hole about how can we make the motor have more torque, this, that, and the other thing. And in the end, it just wasn't worth it for the customer. The price was gonna go crazy. I designed burrs that wouldn't be backward compatible and it just wasn't gonna work for you, the customer. So we decided to just keep the motor exactly the same between Gen 1 and Gen 2. So I've gotten a lot of questions about, hey, I really like the O Gen 2 hopper. I really wanna retrofit it onto a Gen 1. The complete honest answer is that since we had to adjust those angles of the hopper to make them steeper, we needed to make the cutout and top of Ode just a little bit bigger. And so when I initially started doing prototypes with the team, we noticed that there could be some plastic clashing with the originals. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a really hard look at how much interference there is. But if you can put the O Gen 2 hopper on an O Gen 1 body without like a significant problem, we will be offering them for sale starting early next year. We absolutely hear you that you wanna upgrade and I wanna make sure that we give the customer what you want. So please keep your eyes open. If it can be done, we will do it. And I promise we will do our best to help you out. Ode was designed as a purely filter coffee grinder. In my opinion, there are only a few burr sets in the world that do espresso and filter coffee both exceptionally well. So the SSP multi-purpose burrs are one of them. Another one are the EG1 core burrs designed by Doug Weber. Another set is the uh, Ditting 804-807 Lab Sweet burrs by Ditting. So we currently have no plans to have Ode do espresso in its current form. Um, it's just not something I think that the company wants to do. The O Gen 2 burrs definitely grind fine enough for Mocha Pot. I have seen people have really, really good success grinding on the finest setting for Mocha. Also, they will absolutely grind fine enough for AeroPress. Pretty much any filter coffee method you throw at these burrs from Mocha Pot up is gonna be great. Just please, they are not designed to grind for espresso. That is by design. You cannot pull a traditional nine bar shot. You can probably pull like a Sprover or a Turbo shot if you really wanted. They can get up to, you know, six bars, you know, right off burr touch, but these are not designed for espresso. Everything else, really, really great stuff. The first thing you need to design a burr is patience. That's the first thing you need, but 
All, all kidding aside, what you really need is a very developed palette and the ability to make correlations between the design of the burr and the output flavor profile. So I definitely don't recommend just kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall and changing a bunch of things at once. You have to be extremely, extremely diligent and make correlations and basically follow the scientific process. Uh, I will say that I've been doing this for almost 20 years now as an engineer and designing burrs was by far the hardest thing I've ever done. And I've designed medical instruments that go in people's bodies and I've designed crazy robots. This was the hardest thing. So patience, amazing palette, and more patience. That's what I'll say. The best way to become a Q grader, in my opinion, is first you need to taste a ton of coffees. Taste every single coffee you can and don't taste them alone. Taste them with someone who has a better palate than you and start comparing your notes. Just get a cup of filter coffee, taste it with friends, taste it with family. Say, I'm tasting this, what are you tasting, right? So get, get a big exposure to what's out there. That's the first thing. The second thing is that you cannot become a Q grader unless you are a proficient cupper. So cupping is the actual process of evaluating the coffees. That's really the entire fundamental of, of the Q exam. So please buy a set of SEA spec cupping bowls, buy some cupping spoons, and cup every single coffee you possibly can. Any coffee you buy to make as filter, cup it. Any coffee that you see on a grocery store shelf, buy it, cup it. And you know, one of the things I think I wish I would have done sooner is don't just taste and cup exceptional coffees. Taste, taste coffees that you might not usually drink. Taste, you know, things that you might foresee as, you know, undesirable to your palate. So taste, 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 and taste coffees with people who have better palates than you. So that's, that's my advice. My favorite light roast for pour over, I, I find myself continually going back to Say Coffee in Brooklyn, New York. So I only have one subscription and that subscription is to Say. Uh, I get to taste and you know try many, many coffees every single week and they, in my opinion, source and roast the some of the most beautiful coffee I, I've ever had. So uh, big, big shout out to Say. We've done some fellow drops with them, but I'm not being paid to say that or anything, I just think that the value you get, you know, I think I pay 60 bucks for four boxes shipped every single month and the coffees have been some of the best I've tasted in years. So please check out Say Coffee. I think it's say.coffee, check them out. And in terms of grind size, so for O Gen 2, I did do a lot of development work on the Gen 2 burrs using coffee from Say because I really wanted to make sure that these burrs could push extraction beyond 22% of a, you know, a small dose pour over. In doing so, I was somewhere around a five on the dial, maybe a four, depending on what um, paper filter I was using in terms of drawdown time on the SSP burrs. Stick somewhere around the four to five for really a low dose. Uh, if you're doing a higher dose, go up like three, four clicks. But don't be afraid to experiment. Some of the coffees, especially really, really lightly roasted coffees from say, you can push eight, nine, 10 minute brew times, you know, push extraction beyond 23% and the cups are just absolutely beautiful. So please check them out. So I got way more questions about my beard than I anticipated. Uh, the honest answer is I have no more hair left on my head, so I decided to move the hair from my head to my face. I'll say that if you have the patience to grow a beard this long and eat with a mustache this long, you might have the patience to design burrs. So yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm bald and I really didn't like being bald, so I just decided to grow a crazy long beard and I've, I've had it for, I don't know, six, seven years now. So that's that. <laughs>